was our shot. We worked so hard to get to this point and we blew our big shot. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. Have you ever watched a show and walked away feeling unsatisfied or even downright mad about how the writers handled your favorite characters? It's a bitter pill that every fan had to swallow at some point, but we don't have to live with it. In a world of fan fiction and internet discourse, we can make our own headcanon, and that's what we're here to do. We're going to reclaim some ground for the ones the writers forgot, and imagine a brighter tomorrow than they got in the TV finales of yesterday. Well, Mojo says, so it must be true. Okay, that's it. The character you know. Lane Kim is there from our very first day in Stars Hollow as Rory's lifelong best friend. But she was never just a sidekick. Lane always had a lot of layers, sometimes literally. Trust God, is that a band? No, my life. Raised in a strict seven-day Adventist household by a formidable mother, Lane spent her early life hiding her Americanized habits, especially her passion for rock music. Punk, new wave, German metal bands. Broadway soundtracks. Interesting filing system. She couldn't keep up the facade forever, though. By the time she got to college, the situation had become untenable. I want to please you so badly, but I can't. I mean, look at you. Look at what happened last night. It's not good. I don't want anything like this to ever happen again. Lane couldn't follow her own path and conform to her mother's expectations, so she made the brave choice to strike out on her own. With the help and support of her friends, she landed on her feet and was able to give all her energy to her band, Hep Alien. Jeez, you smeared my glasses. <laughs> this is gonna work, one step at a time. After so many years of hiding herself, it was gratifying to see Lane free to define her life on her own terms and making progress towards her dreams. Then it all went off the rails. Where it went wrong. In a word, Zach. Not cool, Lane. I'm sorry, guys. Don't get us wrong, we love Todd Lowe, and when he was playing Lane's friend and bandmate, we were happy to have him around. But when Lane suddenly developed a crush on him, it was as much a surprise to us watching as it was to her. Sorry, we didn't know. Know what? Know what? From the beginning, this relationship didn't make any sense. There was never any romantic chemistry until we were told there was, and the pair never seemed to be on the same wavelength about anything. Even Lane admitted that the attraction was more physical than anything else. As it is, he's just exhibiting basic guy behavior, grunt, grunt caveman stuff, which, to be honest, is a bit of the appeal of Zack. Frankly, it always felt like the writers threw Lane and Zack together because they didn't have any better ideas for her character. As comic relief, Zack adds a fun dynamic, but the slow-witted, uncommunicative slacker is a poor match for smart, motivated Lane. Even their band isn't exactly common ground. Zack loves music, but Lane is the one doing the work to keep Hep Alien on track as well as on beat. It's been a while since we practiced. We've been busy. Tomorrow then? Definitely a conversation to have. Whether it's upholding standards, pushing them out of their creative slump and onto the road, or planning their first album recording, Lane always has her eyes on the prize. Zack is just along for the ride, unless he's actively thwarting her efforts. I vote no. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's that then. That's that. And that could be that for the band. That could be that too. It would have been one thing if their relationship had been a rebound from dream boyfriend Dave Rogalski, or a case of proximity being mistaken for attraction. Instead, Zach quickly became Lane's OTP. So we should pick a time. Sure. How about now? I'm kind of working. Right. How about tonight? I've got band practice. Right. And so do you. Because we're in the same band. The two paired off, got married, and conceived twins while on their honeymoon. As the characters reeled from the rapid changes in their own lives, Lane fans seethed. So you're not all psyched about being knocked up? Are you kidding? This baby sucks! Yeah, this baby totally sucks! It does! It so does! Not that being married and having children isn't a perfectly valid life path, it's just not one that felt right for Lane. Or not at that moment, anyway. For years I was this repressed kid, and then... There's the briefest of windows, and then slam. All of a sudden, I'm this overburdened mother. I barely got to do it, Zach. I barely got the chance to be a person. Having Lane voice these sentiments is kind of like pouring salt in the wound, because she's right. After fighting so hard and so long to make her own life, she only got to do it for a minute before she was responsible for a family. And it doesn't feel wrong to say that Lane Kim was cheated. You are the coolest. Well, I am married to the 
lead guitarist of Vapor Room. How we fix it? There is one hiccup in Lane and Zach's whirlwind transition from bandmates to settled nuclear family unit, and it's a brief breakup. All of Lane's hard work managing Hep Alien finally pays off in an opportunity to play for a label. They're prepared for this shot on every level, and then Zach gets insecure and torpedoes the gig. Oh. Let's go back to the set list. No, we're not gonna do that. I'm here to destroy the system, so stay out of my way. Lane is devastated and furious, and rightly so. But when Zach makes a big romantic scene and proposes by way of apology, she somehow forgives him instantly as if he didn't just dash years of effort in one petulant, jealous impulse. I'm getting married. I heard. It's the last we'll ever really see of her musical ambitions, or of any Lane-related plot that isn't about her relationship. Sorry, but we're not here for that. This is what it is, okay? Maybe this is why people in bands shouldn't date. Yeah. The first thing that needs to happen in this recut is for Lane to tell Zach no. A permanent, unequivocal no. I've changed my mind. Huh? I've changed my mind. I'm taking it back. Taking what back? I have no feelings for you. I was confused before, that's all, but not anymore. We're just roommates and bandmates, and that's it. And that's all it'll ever be. Not only has the relationship run its course, but Zach nuking the band's chances has put Lane in the perfect place for a new chapter. Where, though? Sure, Lane could probably hang with Rory at Yale for a minute, but as we have seen, that can only ever be a temporary solution. So enroll. Go to Yale. Or be a janitor. Yale, janitor, in 100 years we'll all be dead. It's all the same. No, this hasn't been fair to anyone here. I need to go. Lane is totally smart enough, but what she really needs here is a totally blank slate. To get out of Rory's shadow and the small town rut. And that can only mean one thing. My parents just brought in the suitcase that I'm supposed to take on my trip. And to paint you a picture, it could fit you and me plus everything we own and still have enough room to do a little souvenir shopping. I'm never coming back. Gilmore Girls explored the idea of a West Coast spinoff when it sent Jess to Venice Beach in search of his estranged father. Ultimately, it's not surprising that that was a dead end. Jess was always going to have to end up back east to annoy members of Team Logan. So how long have you two known each other? A while. You date? Yes, we used to date. Ah, no hemming, no hawing, good course of action, so. But that doesn't mean the concept wasn't good in principle. And ultimately, Lane could be a far more compelling vessel for a California plotline. You don't come back from California, man. It changes you. What did you expect him to do? Lane's family network is vast, and from what we see of the American Kims, she's always been a bit of a black sheep. But we do know from her trip to South Korea that she really liked some of her overseas relatives. Yeah, some of the food's not so bad, and then my cousins were actually pretty interesting. And the best part, Korea is bootleg heaven. I totally scored in Seoul. In our headcanon, one of those cousins is now studying in Los Angeles, and that's the door Lane goes knocking on in her moment of need. We imagine a cool older sister type for Lane to bond with, someone killing it in grad school, but who shares Lane's tastes and knows where the best underground clubs are. Think a younger Karen O. That's gonna come in handy when it comes to getting a job. At a charmingly grungy spot with the best undiscovered acts in town, Lane and her cousin have spent the night talking music with the bartender. When his waitress doesn't show up, Lane's go-getter attitude is quick to kick in. Look at this. Ooh, Lane, she's super waitress. It will leap tall pancakes in a single bound. Or is it pan's cake? Very funny. It's not gonna work out. Oh, what? She's so good. She's too good. She picks up a tray and seamlessly goes to work leaving that night with a job and maybe a number from the cute bassist in one of the bands. Things are looking bright for Lane Kim. I'm talking about my future, my path, my destiny, my thing, my scene, my bag. I'm of course, to keep things interesting, life will have to throw her some curveballs. LA will be an adventure for Lane. She'll side hustle with some other music-related jobs, like writing freelance reviews. Gotta have Bowie. But do you have to list every album he ever recorded, plus your personal rating between one and 10? Maybe not. She'll struggle to figure out her identity as an artist outside Hep Alien, as she tries to find a fit with a new band. She'll get experience really dating for the first time, and it will be exactly as much fun as it was for any millennial in their 20s. I do like you, Lane. Okay, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I have to go. Balancing music, work, and life will have ups and downs, and she'll wonder if she made the right choice. But Lane isn't a quitter, and eventually it will start to fall into place. How weird is this? 
Yesterday, we're sitting on your porch, playing jacks and praying to grow boobs. And now, look at us. Naturally, there will be plenty of quirky Amy Sherman Palladino side characters to help her along, like a club booker who's obviously in love with her cousin, or a sound tech whose adventurous spirit is a blessing and a curse to their friend Lane, or the low-key regular who never misses the chance to talk with her about bands playing the club. Into the accelerators, the adolescents, the adverts, Agent Orange, the angelic upstarts, the agnostic front, Ash. You went alphabetically. Seem tidy. It is eventually revealed that the regular is themselves an A&R rep for a music management company, but they're not satisfied doing that anymore. And when they decide it's time to start their own label, they'll ask Lane to come with them as a scout. I think this is amazing because I want to do more than just drama. Her encyclopedic music knowledge, flawless taste, and work ethic have finally earned her the recognition she always deserved. Her mother cries when Lane tells her, though she'd never let Lane know as much. She does tell her daughter that she's proud of her, though. One more. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. So it's happily ever after, right? Probably. When we time jump 10 years into the future, the indie label is thriving, and Lane is running the A&R department. She loves her job, especially that she gets to share it with her producer husband, Dave. Sound, I'm sort of an audio geek, sorry. No, don't apologize, I love you. For that, for being that way. I love it, um, I'm like that too. Did we forget to mention Dave? In the canon series, Lane's first boyfriend moved to California to go to college, presumably at an Orange County school like UC Irvine or Chapman. Mm -hmm. I just had a meeting with the counselor. She said I had a very good shot at getting in because I'm awesome. Is this your first choice? Dude, it's my only choice. We imagine that at some point in Lane's journey, they'll cross paths again, maybe when their respective bands play the same venue. And they might not get back together right away, but these soulmates won't be able to stay apart forever. When they do rekindle their romance, it'll be for good. I think a love song's in their future. With lots of lyrics about snogging. They go on to enjoy their musical life together, living in a cute Venice bungalow with a couple of dogs, and they're just starting to talk about adding some kids. Mrs. Kim is, of course, considering moving cross-country, but overall, everyone is very happy. So writing him a song tonight. And that's it. That's a rough idea of how we see the story of Lane Kim unfolding in a world where this character gets an ending worthy of her. What do you think? How would you change Lane's story? Let's talk about it in the comments. I don't know. I don't know any of this, but I will figure something out because I am Keith Moon. I am Neil Peart. I am Rick Allen with and without the arm because I am rock and roll, baby! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.